allowing herself to be convinced by Jesus of, of the value of peace and of that nothing in the world can give it to you and nothing of the world can take it away from you. And it's totally intrinsic matter. And um, I will tell, I, I share this one parable from a friend of mine too uh, around uh, September 11th because it's a very striking parable. Um, for so many days, and it was eight or ten days after the World Trade Center came down, my friend who's a very devoted Course in Miracles teacher, who's over in Spain right now, his name is Axel, and he and a group of Course in Miracles teachers and students went into Ground Zero not too long after it happened, and they got closer and closer and closer, and um, he, he was in such a miraculous state of mind that he was just waltzing in there, ground zero, in his miraculous state of mind. And there was a, a Japanese man who had a plaid sport coat on, came in front of him, and the Japanese man was, hit his head bowed, and was just shaking his head, no, oh, so bad, so terrible. He was seemingly in a state of, of shock and grief. And uh, my friend Axel, walked up close to him and was watching the scene, and then he had this little flicker of thought go through his mind, what if my joy could be an affront to this man's grief and suffering? That was the flicker of thought. And as soon as he took seriously that flicker of the thought, he felt the heat all over his skin. He felt the dust go up his nostrils. He felt the, the dryness in his throat. He felt the stench and the smell of flesh and everything. And instantly, when he just took that one little thought seriously, wonder if my joy could be an affront to this man's grief. This is what Jesus is talking about, about false sympathy. You know, when he says, align with me and stay with me, he means align with me and stay with me completely. So as soon as that flicker of the thought came in, Axel dipped down to the wrong mind. <laughs> and the effects of that wrong mindedness were dramatic in that state, because it, it was not that long after uh, the towers had come down. So I remember asking Axel, I said, what did you do? And he said, I just help. He <laughs> was back up to Christ, like, help. Please help me see this differently, you know. I can see peace instead of this. <laughs> it's like a, a, a call. But in a very sincere way, and you know what? I, he did get lifted right back up into the right mind. He's very strong with his mind frame. He was, he was lifted back up. He was back into this miraculous state where he couldn't feel the, the heat or the dust or anything else. And he looked, and there was the Japanese man. And the Japanese man turned and looked at him, and almost kind of in a Cadence or rap way said to Axel, I can see by the way that you feel that you know that none of this is real. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we mean by by your mind training. If you if you join with the spirit, the witnesses will reflect that joining. You will call forth witnesses in this world of divine love of the Spirit speaking, you know, as you align your mind with the purpose, then you call forth witnesses. Uh, Jesus even describes it in great detail, of course, about how you're always sending out messengers, he says, to bring forth witnesses back. And that was quite a dramatic one, because of the right-mindedness, the dip into wrong-mindedness, what he perceived, and then back into the right-mindedness and the witness that came. So, you know, it's, you can see the potential there. You could literally be seeing somebody that was angry or like my friend uh, down in Argentina who was angry at the breakfast table and then the Holy Spirit whoosh through, you know, in that state and then she ended up bursting into laughter. Uh, she just couldn't hold it in anymore. It just suddenly flipped like that. But those are kind of more dramatic uh, uh, experiences. For most people, it's much more gradual. Uh, it just takes a lot of mind training and practice before you get those, those turnarounds. Yes?
Yeah, you you teach what you would learn. You teach forgiveness, you learn forgiveness. Um, in this world, teaching and learning seem to be separate activities. And we generally assign the teacher role to the one that seems to know more, and the learner role or the student role to the one that needs to learn. But actually, you might say that the mind is in a state of conversion, and so you're really teaching and you're learning, and it's just two ways of describing the same thing that's occurring. Uh, you basically are teaching and learning one thought system or the other, either the Holy Spirit's thought system or the egos. Every single moment, you're teaching and learning that one thought system or another. So really, that this whole journey is a, is a process of becoming a consistent teacher and a consistent learner. And the only way you can do that is, is, is learning and teaching the forgiveness, because that's the only lesson that can be learned. The ego is an impossible lesson. So you can try to learn it, but try as you may, you will never be able to, to learn it, uh, because it's an impossible lesson. It doesn't mean the mind doesn't attempt to try, you know, until it, it sees the alternative and lets it go. So, um, I think the one way of thinking of teaching in a higher sense is in terms of thought. That basically you're teaching with your thoughts. And you're learning with your thoughts. And then there comes a point when that teaching learning becomes so consistent. Uh, teach only love, or that is what you are. That's what Jesus is saying. You know, use that as your, as your goal then that stabilizes the mind when it becomes consistent in those thoughts. Um, David, I heard a lot of people talk about uh, the change in 2012, um, and I just wondered what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, that amazing energy shift things happening, whether people are thinking like that will create that, or, yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, some date back to talking about the, the Mayan calendar and, and even the end of the world around that time, and others take a little more moderate or mild approach and say, well, there's going to be some significant shift in consciousness. And um, everything in this world is symbols, so, you know, in terms of um, where human consciousness seems to be, there will be those time periods and leaping periods where there will seem to be more significant changes where people will seem to notice a bit of a difference. And I think that this could very well be what will be coming in, in, in the coming few years. But you have to understand that, that the more you train your mind, the more you start to see the sameness of everything. So, you know, you know, somebody who's, who has a highly trained mind, you know, would be imperceptible, uh, you know, because there's this sense that, that things are healed now. It's like, it's, it's not a time thing. It's not looking at the collective, so to speak, or believing in the collective and kind of feeling out where where global consciousness is, or whatever. Those are all symbols, stepping stone symbols. Just like when they talked about like the Hunnam's monkey effect, kind of like when something all of a sudden starts to appear, a phenomenon in different parts of the world, even though there hasn't been any kind of physical transportation of ideas, uh, it seems like the ideas start to pop up in different parts of the country, like when, there, when there's a readiness for them. So, I think with, with things like that, uh, I think a lot of people get, there's so much looking for hope of, of shifts and change, and, and they're, they're thinking there'll be sometimes some kind of major event and so on and so forth, but, but really the, the kind of stabilized perception we're talking about is not really tied into time or events. It's more tied into your mind training. 